It's a chilly day in Northwest Wisconsin. This is our fall episode in Eau Claire. So it took us eight seasons, but we're here. We're in Eau Claire, which is um, a really large city in this part of the state. And we're in Eau Claire. Finally. It's a nice city. It is. Yeah, well, what does Eau Claire mean? It means clear water, John. Clear water. In French. And that tells you a couple things. First of all, this was French territory during the fur trade days. And secondly, it's one more city that was built on water. We've heard that story before. A few times. <laughs> Once or twice. It came to life right here at the confluence of the Eau Claire and the Chippewa Rivers. Uh, early on, they were highways that moved both people and goods for millennia, actually. And then in more recent times, it became kind of channels for lots of logs and lumber making one-way trips downstream. And when did that begin? 1840s, okay. kind of lumbering starting. And the bigger river here is a Chippewa. Uh, it drains a huge portion of northwest Wisconsin. And that watershed was pretty much covered with these dense forests of white pine. So the Chippewa was big enough to float all these logs downstream to the Mississippi, which is about 50 miles downstream from us, and had the power to drive mills as well. So Eau Claire had both logs and lumber, and uh, two sides of the same coin. It's hard to believe today, but there's one report that said that during the peak of the spring log drive, 10 million logs floated through Eau Claire every single day. Which is, the thought of that's remarkable. It is. Yeah. The thought of someone trying to count Who them. Who counted them? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing as well. Yeah. A lot of them stayed here, and they were sawed into boards and shingles and lath. At one time, by 1870, there were 22 sawmills here, most of them right here in this region. And they had lots and lots of jobs. 1872, the city incorporates with around 2,300 people. Uh, a decade later, it's got more than 10,000. Oh. So you have lots of people here, and all those mill hands had 110 saloons to choose from. 110 saloons. 110. That's a lot, even by Wisconsin standards. And was, so did that mean it was kind of a rough city, a yeah, little, rough time yeah, around here? A little rough for a few decades, John, but it didn't last all that long. Uh, what happened was the destruction was so complete, the white pine were pretty scarce by the 1890s. So Claire had to find something else to do, mm -hmm. and it took a while, but what they did was they turned from lumber to industry. So you had plants right around here that made everything from sawmill machines to pressure cookers. But the big one began back in 1917 when Gillette Tire opened mm. its first plant just upstream in the Eau Claire. That became, as Uniroyal, by far the biggest employer in the entire area, about 1,300 jobs. Uniroyal? Yep. Yeah. And is it, is it still here? Closed back in 1991. It did, okay. Uh, and that caused a lot of anxiety. But Eau Claire was already in the process of reinventing itself. Uh, back in 1916, which is a year before the tire plant opened, a t state teacher's college had opened in the area just south of downtown. That became, in time, UW Eau Claire, which has around 10,000 students mm. and is always ranked as among the top public universities in the Midwest. So a lumber town, a factory town, becomes a college town. So that's part of the transformation. More recently, you have technology firms uh, opening here as well and a real cultural renaissance. And the key figure there is a guy named Justin Vernon, mm -hmm. a musician whose best known project is Bony Bear. Uh, he could live anywhere, but he has chosen to stay here and help make his hometown kind of an indie hotspot, right. as it certainly is. Yeah. And it all comes together here downtown. I spent time in Eau Claire over the years, haven't been back for a while. I didn't recognize the place. Hmm. You know, these new office buildings, new housing, new arts facility, new parkland. So when you think of all the things that have happened here along the riverbanks, you've got the logs floating down and factories rising from the banks, and now the arts flourishing here, it's a remarkable transformation. Big transformation. Yep. Yeah, um, population? About 70,000, okay. and still growing. And uh, location? West central Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and it's on the Chippewa and Eau Claire rivers right here. 
a bit north of Interstate 94 and about 80 miles east of Minneapolis, St. Paul. And I, we've been here all day and there. It's, it's a fall day, our last episode, and I'm telling you, we've seen a lot of bikers. A whole lot. Wonderful trail. A biking mecca as well. It is. The state trail down here runs for 30 miles and it's paved, it's blacked up, all the way down to Duran. And that is that where you've been all day? No, I've been sort of <laughs> trying to stay out of the range. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, John. See you, John. See ya. Born in Eau Claire, Menards. There's 300 stores in 14 states born right here in Eau Claire. Presto Industries, how do we know it? Presto pressure cookers, you know what they're known for now? Uh, pizza ovens, air fryers, waffle makers. I have all of them. I'm standing in front of Banbury Place. I wish you could be here because I smell rubber. This used to be a huge tire company. Gillette Tire Company emerged with Uniroyal and BF Goodrich. Then it became Michelin Tires. Now it's Banbury Place and we're going in to talk to an artist who works in this old tire factory. A lot of people don't know we're here. Yeah. Many people I knew worked here at Uniroyal. What else goes on in this building? We have people that upholster furniture upstairs. Cool. There's a few woodworkers in the building. Claymore Pottery. The guy that roasts coffee. Yeah. This is James. He's from the sticker spot. Hey, James. Art studio slash yoga. And then there's the Painted Lotus. That's another gallery. We have three fitness places now. This is it. This is my studio. It's pretty eclectic. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of my stuff in here. Um, a lot of friend artists. Who does the jewelry? Um, I have a friend named Destiny. These aren't really for warmth. No, they're for... It's for... Flare. Flare. You'd look really good with one on. Thank you. Allie does the horse paintings you see in here. That's all done with her fingers, that horse painting. How long have you been in this space? It'll be two years in May. This poor painted stuff, this is the stuff we do in the in the work room and a lot of people come in and we do workshops and they it's get to make It's called poor them. painting? So you're gonna fill this cup with the colors that you want. I wanna share art with people. One, two, three. That's what my main thing is, not sharing just my art, right. but sharing art with people and letting people know that you don't have to be traumatized by art. You know how many people walk in my door and say, I right. cannot do that. John, you are like an artist. And can I tell you, they're all so different. They are so different. But it's so a different. set. Yeah, it, right. God, I'm an okay. artist. <laughs> yes, you are. How cool is that? How did you pick this school to come to? I toured the campus, I liked it, but really it was just a hunch. I wanted to get the real college experience. You know, you move away, you meet new people, and that's exactly what I did. It's, it's pretty a, nice, actually. It's a nice campus. Oh yeah, definitely. Wisconsin's most beautiful campus, actually. We got middle campus, we got upper campus. Where's the hill people complain about? Oh, that's around the corner over there. It is. You kind of base your day off of how many times you have to walk up the hill if you're a freshman, honestly. Probably halfway up, you'll be out of breath. You're a senior now. Yeah. Yeah. And you're graduating with a degree in what next year? Finance. And what are you going to do? Um, I actually just got a full-time offer. You um, did? For my internship, yep. Congratulations. Thank how you. great is that? <laughs> where are we right now? We're on the bridge. The and famous is, footbridge. And where does it go from where to where? From uh, Water Street to campus. It's um, the connector. It's really the connector. Have you ever heard of Bridge Face? Bridge Face. Yeah, no, Bridge Face. Walking across the bridge in the dead of winter. When your nose hairs freeze and you're dripping icicles. It's called Bridge Face. Bridge Face, yeah. <laughs> and you get it? Oh, yeah, you only, for sure get it. Only here. If you choose to walk across the bridge, that is. That's why you take the bus. <laughs> the hill and the bridge. <laughs> and what would you tell people if they were thinking of coming here? What would you tell them? I would say just do it. Just really? do it, yep. It's a great decision. And this is Davies? This is yep. the, uh, this is the student center. Yeah. Everybody comes here in between classes to get some food. There's a couple of student org things in here that you can join. So you're in the heart of the campus, at least from a student perspective. Yeah. W.R. Davies Center, it opened in 2012. This place is always hopping. So we have a little over 11,000 students on campus. This was the original dining room. We call it the Heritage Room. The Heritage room. room. No charge, so students can make a reservation for this. We sometimes have candidate interviews. This institution went through a huge growth period in the 60s. You know, we had fewer than 1,000 students in 1960, and we went over 10,000 by 1970. It's a beautiful building, and it Thank works, you. doesn't it? It works really well. You know, not only does it provide the food service, a place to study, but this is the entertainment hub of the campus as well. Yeah. And when you have the state's uh, largest, and I would argue best, undergraduate music program, this is a place to see any kind of entertainment. You would argue that, would you? But yes, yeah. you want to talk about <laughs> no, no, <we're> <laughs> I believed you. We have a little slogan called the power of Anne. 
So you can be in the marching band and be a biochemistry major. Almost 10% of the student body is engaged in our music programs, even though they may be an accounting major or a chemistry major. We're not going to put you in a box. Yes, we're interested in what you're passionate about studying, and we'll help you find that. But you're not just your major. You're more than your major. We have the only nursing school in the UW system west of Madison. So it's a very competitive nursing program. Then we have some unusual programs like communication sciences and disorders, speech pathology, therapy, et cetera. And that master's program um, is the most competitive uh, program we have. So Can we talk about this tree? What is the tree? The tree is our council oak. It's called the council oak because that is where warring tribes or tribes with different points of view, this is where they met to resolve those issues, to seek wisdom and reflection. And I would tell you, every student on campus pretty much knows what the Council Oak is. So Jake, you know, the uh, chancellor told us some stuff about campus. So I'm sure he didn't were, tell you about Water Street. He didn't say a word about Water Street. No, that's right. No. So there's really three parts of this town. There is downtown, there's campus, and there's Water Street. And here we are on Water Street. Right there, Pioneer Tavern, my sister's favorite. She graduated in 87. Uh, if you're over 50, I bet you love this bar. It's called The Joint. It's famous for a great jukebox for jazz and blues and folk. And it's the best bar in town, as they say, to talk and drink. The Joint. If you're a student at UW, Eau Claire, or you've been a student since 2006, you know this place. Jake said, come on, join me. I'm like, no, I've been in recovery 28 years. I was pickled for a long time in my life. No more pickling. Yeah, but Enjoy. Where are we going right now? We're going into the cook shanty and yeah. the bunkhouse. We are at the Logging Camp Museum. Paul Bunyan Logging Camp Museum. It's an 1890s logging camp. At this camp, it would have been maybe about 30 to 40 men. Yeah. They would stay here for the duration they then? They would stay for the duration of the logging season, which would usually be from early November until early April. Lumberjacks made a dollar a day. They worked six days a week from sunup to sunset. They didn't get paid till the end of the cutting season. <laughs> so, but they came here and they slept here. They were fed. What did they serve? What, well, was you know, typical was, fare? The food was high in fats and carbohydrates. The men had to eat about 8,000 calories a day because that was your fuel to get out and work. And what happens here is that there's a huge amount of kids that come in here. We'll have different groups that come from the community too. So here we're going into the bunkhouse. It's a great tour for these kids though. Oh, and do they wonderful. love it? They love it. Yeah. They love it because you're really going back in time mm -hmm. and being in a building with artifacts that actually were used by lumberjacks yeah. here in Wisconsin and in this area. This is where you're gonna spend your time when you're not out working or eating. You're sleeping two down and two up. So you've got a bunk buddy. And you all give off a little bit of body heat, right? So you help to keep each other warm. Eau Claire really was founded on the logging business. But at one point, there were 20 different sawmills here in Eau Claire. Was this a good job? I would think so, because it was steady employment. Yeah. You, you were being fed. It was a dangerous job. That's the big catch, right. is that being a lumberman was, was a, not a safe job. In this bunkhouse, there were fleas, lice, and bed bugs. Yeah. I did not ask for an application. Won't be working here. Oh, I feel itchy. I am standing in front of the house where Pauline Phillips used to live. Yeah. She lived um, down the street from her twin sister, Esther. Do you know who I'm talking about? Dear Abby and Ann Landers, they lived here for a time. They moved out in like 1955. And in 1972, Dear Abby wrote a love letter to the city of Eau Claire because she called it a sweetheart of a city. We have a historian and he said he had been here not that many years ago and that when he came back, he didn't recognize it. There is something really exciting about Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Yeah, if you go back 40 years, the downtown actually was, I would say, close to thriving. This is the Jamf Theater. And then in the mid 80s, that all stopped. Everything went out to the, the highway corridors. One of the largest black box theaters in the US. And this was kind of a ghost town. About 12 years ago, Royal Credit Union built their headquarters right across the river here in Phoenix Park. Mm -hmm. Phoenix Park was built by the city at the exact same time. And that was the first kind of major development in about 40 years down here. So that kind of paved the way about 12 years ago for all of this to start happening. We are standing where are we standing right now? We are in the Powell Center at the Confluence. And then this building, uh, when it was announced in concept, really became this beacon of, of development. And this is the RCU Theater, which is the large theater at the Pablo, um, just over 1,200 seats. It's a remarkable theater. You know, you look at this, this idea of connectedness and people 
uh, of all generations want to be more connected than they wanted to be 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, and so you see all, all ages wanting to be part of these things and, and have these experiences. All around the building has really tried to be inclusive to make sure this is a community building available to community members and community organization. The next one that we were involved in was the what's now the Lismore Hotel. Yeah. And we had this vision that downtown isn't dead. It's become a, a really popular kind of ad hoc meeting spot. We use it for meetings all yeah. the time. We actually have two apartment projects that we're working on right now. And it's been incredibly fun to be a part of, and it's, it's humbling for us to see all of these things happening. And this has all been about economic development. How do we, how do we kind of raise everything up? And uh, we're going to be spending a lot of time making sure that there's, there's opportunities and access for everyone to be a part of that. Yeah. Did you know that Eau Claire has a huge bicycling culture? I'm in front of Shift, Cyclery, and Coffee Bar. That's right, bicycles and coffee all in the same place. Nice. This is Nick Meyer. How are you, sir? Good. You're the editor, you're the owner, volume one? Yeah. When we first started, there was, of course, a lot of media organizations on the stories of the news of the day, but a lot of the cultural happenings of the community were kind of slipping through the cracks. We, the very first issue of volume one came out, and people said, well, that's great. You covered everything there is to cover that was anything good in town. Now, I mean, we, you know, we put an issue out every two weeks, and we can't even fit everything that's happening. We tell the stories, and hopefully it inspires people to keep doing things, and then there's more stories to tell, and it just it keeps the fire burning. The resources are deep. I mean, we deep. have enormous amounts of information in the magazine about what there is to do in this community. But we really are, we're a little bit different because we're not just the, the paper. We also produce a lot of what's happening in the community too. This is the Sounds Like Summer Concert Series, all original music, all about this local music scene. So we put on a lot, of, a lot of events, major concert series in the parks, art festivals and food festivals, food trucks, restaurant week, all those types of things that we're doing events uh, around the calendar. And then of course we have our retail store uh, in our lower level of our office. So we actually produce items uh, about and for for the community and we elevate other makers from throughout the community uh, and sell their wares in our store as well. So there's really several different platforms from which we try and tell the story of this community and um, help it grow into a, a flourishing place. And then we also do kind of help support uh, the Oxbow Hotel across the street. That's its own separate business, but that's something that I've been involved with some, with some friends and some partners as well. So we help make sure that that's a success as well out of this office too. This was actually a really uh, popular hotel in the 50s and 60s. It's nice. We, I love the fact that there was a record player in my room. Yeah. I think it's a chance to kind of enjoy your hotel room in a way that um, you may not normally. We also have our whole Oxbow Outfitters program. The trail network here is absolutely amazing and gorgeous. And um, that's a big part of what we do here too, is trying to get people to experience the outdoors of this community. Hey, we're at Carson Park, home of Eau Claire baseball. They had a Class C minor league team called the Eau Claire Bears. And who played for them? Hank Aaron, Joe Torrey, Bob Euchre all played baseball right here in Eau Claire. You didn't know, neither did I. We're in Eau Claire. We're talking youth hockey. This is not Michael. You are the president of the Eau Claire Youth Hockey Association. Correct. Youth hockey has been around in Eau Claire for quite a while, and we have 300 members of Eau Claire Youth Hockey as of last year. So, so 300 members, does that mean there's 300 kids who come out to play? Or yes. how many kids? Yep. There are. Correct. Yep. Ages from 4 to 14. Each level brings a different ability to them. They, they kind of start at mini mites learning to skate, learning to fall down, and the biggest challenge is learning when you fall down how to get back up off the ice. Oh, sure. Now they get all this equipment on, it's baggy, it's bulky, and then they get the hang of it, and each level they get to do work on new skills and new development, so it's fun to watch. And Eau Claire is a big hockey town. It is, yeah. Right now we feed basically almost four high school teams. We have Eau Claire North, Eau Claire Memorial, ECA Stars, which is our girls program for the high schools, and we have Regis Altoona. It's an important part of this community. It is, yeah. yeah. Do you wonder if Eau Claire has a fascination with Mona Lisa? No, it's a smart marketing move by this place called Mona Lisa's. So I have eaten at Herbert's and Gerbert's in Stevens Point in Madison, and here's a fun fact. Guess where its birthplace is? Right here in Eau Claire. Herbert's and Gerbert's birthplace. And I don't know if that's Herbert or Gerbert, but he's part of the uh, sculpture tour in Eau Claire. 54 original sculptures. It's a rotating tour, but guess what? My favorite uh, sculpture on the tour, look at this. It's not on the tour, it's permanent. Who doesn't love a good gargoyle? 
So you realize that if you say you're coming to Eau Claire, they say, are you going to the courthouse? <laughs> this is what they say. So you've got a reputation that precedes you. Have. Yeah. And did it have the reputation before you got here? Uh, it had a reputation for good burgers in that there, and we just kind of grew from that there. Welcome. We have tables all the way in the back as well. And for eight years now, we've been the best burger, best fish fry, and best all around bar food How in the Chippewa Valley. Should yes. I get some gloves and help you? You can. We're making California burgers. They show up. <laughs> we, we get a lot of people. They said, yeah, we went on the uh, best burger in Eau Claire, and you, you pop up. This is about our max that we can make at a time, which happens um, could happen often during the week, especially on our Thursday nights, and we have two for one. I can help yeah, serve too. Like okay. It. How long have you had this place? 16 years. 16 years. We farmed for 35 years, dairy farmed, and then. Wow. Who still needs oh, one? Me, you me, guys, me, oh, it's me. you. There we go. Thank <laughs> you. You're welcome. And we just woke up one morning and said it ain't going nowhere, so we sold it. Yeah. And I always knew this was a good bar from growing up in Eau Claire. Sure. This is a great hamburger. So um, who else works here? Now, who didn't want cheese at this table? Well, my two daughters. <laughs> What's it like working with your dad? Oh, it's, it's great. <laughs> He's got so many stories. Did you just hear yourself? I did. What you did. Oh. I didn't know what I wanted to say. Oh. People like to come and see him and hear his stories and talk to him. And I love that your mom's working, too. Hey, Ma. Hi. <laughs> At some point in time, everybody's been working I bet. here. Well, he has, he parked himself, just so you know. He did, I'm sure at, he did. At the end yes, of the bar, and he's talking. Yes, he likes that, <laughs> but it, it, you got to watch him because he doesn't, like, wait on the people around him because he's oh, he so busy talking. So they've got empty drinks for, like, they could have them for hours, and they would all just still be there talking. That's all right. It's a good business, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's been yeah. great. We, we started small and we became something just awesome now in town. We've been voted best burger, best fish fry. Um, we have great bloodies. We have awesome staff. Uh, we just have great camaraderie around here and, and we really pride ourselves on that. You should, you should pride yourself on that. Did you know that Eau Claire is the world's largest producer of horseradish? No, <laughs> I swear, right here in Eau Claire. No horse or radish in it, just so you know. Is that your daughter, Rachel? Yes. Hi, Rachel. Hi. We're at the Panasia Kitchen. Can you talk about your restaurant? This is pretty much family uh, business. So who in your family works here? That's two of my daughter. This is my wife. My yeah. daughter-in-law, nephew, and we have uh, three, four more. When you say Pan-Asian food, what kind of food is that? Pan basically means unity, and then Asia, unity of Asian foods. Of all, kitchen, of all so. Asian. We feature a lot of food like Hmong, uh, Chinese, Vietnamese, uh, Korean. It's uh, bean sprouts and Thai. And you've expanded some, yes? We did. We actually, on the other side, our dining area was a little bit smaller. Yeah. So we only had about four tables. This dining probably sit about close to 100. And your lunch and dinner every day? Yes. Yeah. And is it always a lunch buffet? Lunch buffet. But not dinner buffet. Not dinner. We stay pretty busy. That's a chakwe deal, Malaysian dish. Do you do a lot of to-go or delivery? We don't do delivery. You don't do delivery? We, delivery. Yeah, we do to-go. These are homemade? You made them? Homemade. And are these your mom's recipes? Oh, this is good. Mm -hmm. Not my mom's recipe, pretty much my recipe. Your recipes? Yeah. Yeah. And this sauce is really good for that, too. This is? This homemade, the prime sauce. Mm-hmm. What are you making? Uh, Mongolian beef. Mongolian beef? Yep. Did he teach you how to make this? Yeah. He did? What's most popular? General Chow. General Chow is pretty much very popular around here, the Pad Thai, and also the uh, Thai street noodle. Why did you pick this location? This is uh, pretty good traffic. Oh, good traffic. Going town. Oh, yeah. yeah. You ready? ready? One, two, three. Yep. I knocked it over. You go first. I know, Coop. Just so you know, All I've, right. uh, I've cool. played yes. um, in Stoughton yeah. on this show. Yes. But before that, I didn't know anything about okay. it. People say that the Vikings played it a thousand years ago, and, and we don't really know if they played it or not. Oh. But the thing that we do know is it was first named in the Swedish history books on the island of Gotland hmm. in about the 1920s. Okay. And it really expanded a lot in the 1980s. Wisconsin's kind of the hotbed for Kube right now. And um, you know, I think Eau Claire is kind of this mecca or the place that people want to come to, to play in ch the tournament and the championships. But there's Kube tournaments all around the state right now. And how, why is it so hot in Wisconsin? Um, well, I mean, the first tournament in the US was started right here in Eau Claire, the it US was. championship, yeah. He's won it the past two years. Isn't and, that great? And most, I would say the overwhelming majority of clubs and tournaments that have started nice. outside of Eau Claire have resulted from people coming here and playing. Being here. And there's a king in the middle, right? And he's like the eight ball. If you knock him over during the game, you lose. Whoa! Oh, 
Stay away from the king. The object is to clear all the coobs on your opponent's side, and then once you do that, then you can uh, attack the king and try to knock the king over. And this is a game anybody can play, right? That's the beautiful thing about the game. Yeah. So men and women can compete at the same level against each other. Age is, is not an issue. From what I know, we have the largest weekly Coob League in the world. <laughs> Finally, after eight seasons, I understand the word renaissance. It means Eau Claire. I'm here with the city manager, Dale Peters. You have 30 seconds, this is the drill, okay. to tell us why Eau Claire, Wisconsin is the best place in the world to live, work, and play. And city manager, you can start now. Well, we are known for our economic development and job growth. We have one of the best universities in the Midwest. We're a top tier green city. We have 40 miles of bike trails. We have two beautiful rivers. We have a flourishing arts and music community. Uh, we thrive on uh, collaboration and diverse ideas. We have excellent health care. As you know, we're the coop capital of North America. We are a bird city, Five, a tree city, a, four, a well, three, playful city, and an all-America city. So that's it. You're done. Thank you so much. That was perfect. So right here, the Delaney Ooh. Inn. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that? And turned into Banbury. <laughs> Um, Eric knows what he's doing, so he taught me how to play. Okay. And then he beat really? me in like three minutes. Oh. <laughs> what happened to the other one? He went to the pickle. He went to the pickle. <laughs> this episode of Around the Corner with John McGivern would not be possible without the generous financial support of all of our underwriters. Underwriters, thank you. The Greater Milwaukee Foundation's Ernest C. and Florence M. Shockey Fund and by the David A. and Nancy E. Putz Fund. The Greater Milwaukee Foundation, inspiring philanthropy, serving donors, and strengthening communities now and for the future. Michaels Corporation, serving the energy, transportation, telecommunications, and utility industries. Michaels, constructing North America's infrastructure for our future. We Energy's foundation at Wisconsin Public Service Foundation are proud to support public television. Together we create a brighter future for the communities we serve. ATC moves electricity from where it's generated to communities where it's needed. American Transmission Company, helping to keep the lights on, businesses running, and communities strong.